What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Screen Theory. So about six months ago, I made a video talking about the biomechanics of fry screaming. But since then, I've learned some new things, some things that I did talk about in my fry screaming exercise program, but weren't included in that video of the fry screaming biomechanics. So I wanted to redo it and just kind of put all the information in one place. Now, this is not going to be a fry screaming tutorial. If you're trying to learn to fry scream, this particular video may not be super useful to you. I'm just going to nerd out and go really in depth on how a fry scream works. What is physically happening that allows us to produce the distortion? So fry screams are produced by the true chords, but how? What are the true chords physically doing that allows them to safely create that distortion? Well, in order to understand this, we first need to talk about a few concepts, the first of which is phonation threshold pressure. Phonation threshold pressure is the bare minimum amount of air pressure it takes to make the true chords vibrate fast enough in order to produce your voice. If you are generating air pressure, but it is below the phonation threshold pressure, then your true chords would not be vibrating fast enough to produce your voice. They would instead be producing vocal fry. Vocal fry is what the true chords do when they're not given enough air pressure to make them vibrate fast enough and produce your voice. So if I were to completely relax my true chords and then try to produce the least amount of air pressure that I can in order to move my true chords and make them produce a sound, they would produce vocal fry. But if I were to gradually increase that air pressure until I hit my phonation threshold pressure, well, you would first hear vocal fry, then you would hear vocal fry mixed with my voice, and then you would just hear my voice. <sighs> So the fry register occurs below phonation threshold pressure. If you're not using enough air pressure to produce your voice, then your true chords are going to be doing some form of vocal fry. But the distortion for a fry scream occurs when you are just a smidge below the phonation threshold pressure, right at that point where it sounds like the vocal fry is kind of mixed with your voice. So that staticky raspy sound is the essence of the fry screaming distortion. And in that example, I was producing it very softly. But fry screams are louder and more powerful, and we use a significant amount of air pressure when doing them. So wouldn't that put us way above our phonation threshold pressure, and we would just be singing or belting? We, we wouldn't be producing any distortion? Well phonation threshold pressure changes depending on how forcefully we are contracting certain muscles in the larynx. And those specific muscles are the cricothyroid and thyroarytenoid muscles. The cricothyroid muscle contracts to tilt the thyroid cartilage forward, which essentially stretches the true chords. It lengthens them, and it's more active when we are trying to hit higher pitched notes. The thyroarytenoid muscle, on the other hand, is built directly into the true chords. It runs through the length of each true chord, and when this muscle pair contracts, it shortens the true chords and it's more active when we are trying to use a deeper voice and hit lower pitched notes. So we have two muscles that do the opposite actions of each other, and this is called an agonist-antagonist relationship. So think of the bicep and the tricep muscles. The bicep contracts to bend the elbow, and the tricep contracts to straighten the elbow. But now flex the muscles in your arm. Try to contract your bicep so that it pops out and looks all big, uh, and then feel it. And you feel, yep, that muscle is contracting, it's more firm, it's harder, but also feel your tricep, and you'll notice that your tricep contracts too. 
because in order to contract the bicep without the elbow bending, well, the tricep has to contract too. The bicep wants to bend the elbow and the tricep wants to straighten the elbow. So if we flex the muscles in our arm, both of these muscles are contracting, producing an equal and opposite force of each other. They're resisting each other. And the result is you feel both muscles contracting, there is more muscle tone, they become more firm and rigid, but there's no movement at the joint. So when a muscle contracts without changing length, this is called an isometric contraction. And I speculate that this is what the thyroarytenoid and cricothyroid muscles are doing when we fry scream. And so this increase in muscle tone is what raises the phonation threshold pressure. If the vocal cords become a little bit more firm and stiff, it's gonna take more air pressure to make them vibrate. So right now I'm going to squeeze and contract contract my laryngeal muscles as hard as I can and then try to produce sound. <laughs> So essentially the same thing happened as when my true chords were completely relaxed. You hear vocal fry first, then you hear vocal fry kind of mixed with my voice, and then you just hear my voice. And you could tell I was really contracting those muscles hard based on how strained and tight my voice sounded. But the main difference is that that took a lot more air pressure than when my voice was completely relaxed. So by isometrically contracting the thyroarytenoid and vocalis muscles, we increase the muscle tone of the true chords, but don't change their length. And this, once again, increases the phonation threshold pressure. So if we are belting and singing loudly and using a lot of air pressure to make our voice get loud, by increasing the muscle tone, by contracting those muscles, we are essentially raising raising the phonation threshold pressure higher than the amount of air pressure that we're currently using to make our voice get loud. So imagine that we are singing while keeping our voice very relaxed, but we want to sing loudly and make our voice carry well and have a lot of energy, so we use a lot of air pressure. And in this instance, the air pressure that we're using is way above the phonation threshold pressure. But then imagine we contract the thyroarytenoid and cricothyroid muscles. We increase the stiffness and the firmness of the true chords, which increases the phonation threshold pressure. So suddenly, the high amount of air pressure that we're using to make our voice get loud is just below the phonation threshold pressure, and it puts us into the fry register, right at that place where the vocal fry is kind of mixed with the vibrations of the true chords, and this is what produces the distortion. This is how we can fry scream and produce distortion, but stay in our fry register while doing it very loudly with a lot of air pressure. And this is something that you could even hear. I'm going to sing a note, and then I'm going to gradually contract those muscles harder. And you will hear how that clean note starts to distort, and how it starts to put me into my fry register and produces the distortion. So depending on how much air pressure we are generating, there is a sweet spot for how forcefully we need to contract those muscles. If we want to produce the fry screaming distortion very softly, when we're not using a whole lot of air pressure, well then we don't have to contract those muscles very hard. But if we want to fry scream loudly, and when we're using a lot of air pressure to do so, we need to contract those muscles a little bit more, which puts us into our fry register. Now, one thing to note is that if we contract those muscles too forcefully, well then we're not really allowing the true chords to vibrate at all. We've raised the phonation threshold pressure too high. And this is often what people do when they try to learn to fry scream and they start with a vocal fry. They do vocal fry like this. <laughs> This form of vocal fry is what happens when we contract those muscles too forcefully and we're not really allowing the true chords to vibrate at all. Whereas the type of vocal fry that we need for fry screaming is much more relaxed. <sighs> Oh, wow. 
if we are attempting to fry scream at a louder volume to actually fry scream but we're contracting those muscles too forcefully well then it's going to sound really throaty and forced and strained So ultimately, the mechanism that allows the fry scream to work is that we are slowing down the speed of the true chord vibrations. By staying just below the phonation threshold pressure, we are staying in the fry register where the true chords are not vibrating as quickly as they would be when singing. When we are above the phonation threshold pressure and the true chords are vibrating very quickly, then they produce frequencies of sound that correspond with specific notes. This is the frequency spectrum of middle C being played on a piano, and you can see the peaks of each of these waves, with the largest peak corresponding to the frequency range of middle C, whereas this is the frequency spectrum of a fry scream, where there are no waves that are corresponding with specific frequency ranges that produce notes. Instead, there are waves all over the place, and we're pretty much hearing almost the entire frequency spectrum at once. And this is essentially what distortion is. So that's pretty much it. This is what I believe to be the best explanation for how fry screams work biomechanically. Now, there have never been any studies on this. There is no research or evidence that I can point to in order to validate any of the claims I just made in this video. I'm hoping that the data from Will Ramos's EMG study comes back and verifies some of what I just said, specifically the part about the isometric contraction of the thyroarytenoid and cricothyroid muscles. However, this argument does make sense mechanically, it does have a lot of face value, and until someone presents a better explanation or argument for how a fry scream works, then this is what I'm gonna go with. But anyway, that is it for this video. If you stuck around to the end, then I hope you found it interesting. And if you like the way I teach metal vocals and you want to support my channel, well, please leave a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.